So we've pulled Project Maverick out of mothballs. It's been stored away for a while because of this COVID stuff. But finally, we're getting it ready for compliance. Collapsible steering column, the correct type of brake reservoirs, brake lines, seat belts, all of the safety features that are required to be legal on the road in Australia. So we've got all our wiring back in, and of course, our five litre Coyote with 6R80 transmission. Uh, we've fabricated our air box. Uh, we've got our cooling system in place and all our mounting brackets ready to go in. Our AC is being plumbed. Not very far off at all. The unique thing about this is the development of the, our RRS three link rear suspension. So now I'm going to take you through the unique nature of the RRS three link. The only true performance rear suspension system for a 1970 Maverick. This is our tried and tested system of making a rear suspension system for vintage Fords. And you'll see some similarities between certain components like in the Mustang and early Falcons. Front cross member, very similar. On this one, we've incorporated an engine mount for the 6R80 transmission. This is an option available. The torque arm is slightly different, mainly for clearance to the floor. It's got a stepped flange on the rear. Uh, you'll see that it's still got trailing arms, the same as our conventional three link. However, these instead of tubular are rectangular for clearance, so you can put lots of big rubber underneath. The other thing about this is this is all offset again for uh, the option of putting bigger rubber. The way the shock absorbers mount into the floor on the original, they have a bolt in frame. We use that as part of the foundation for anchoring the rear shocks. Then we reinforce that whole floor with a special fabricated upper mount cross member. There's a few tricks to installing this, and it's really important to be aware that the original seat belt anchor point has to be removed. We've got the reinforcing frame that picks up that same point, and we provide a couple of new nuts so you can bolt the seat belts back in. So this bolts into all the original floor panelling. That way it reinforces that whole back section to take the load of the vehicle's weight. These points here will remove the rear seat and show you where they fix into the rear floor. There's not much real estate behind a big performance nine inch axle housing. So we've developed a Mumford linkage which operates in principle the same as a Watts linkage. This provides lateral stability. Now you'll notice some unique features about this. Two propellers, one up, one down. On this side, the chassis is slightly different. So there's a different amount of clearance from this side to that side. So all of this linkage mounts to a special frame that we've developed because there's normally no clearance for any linkage behind a nine inch axle housing in an unmolested chassis kitch, we've developed this frame. You'll notice that it's got an indentation here to make sure there's adequate clearance for the pumpkin on the 9-inch. Also, it's braced and articulated into where the original uh, frame for mounting the fuel tank is. This adds a lot of stiffness between the rear rails as well, because it's only lateral load, but it ties the whole thing together. Yeah. This is a HRP housing, and you can see it's got a lot of reinforcement in this area. Now, all of these components, if you're not very careful, can cause clearance issues, because this is a much larger housing. This one, we've rated to up to 2,000 horsepower. The one that's in my Maverick here is rated to 1,200 horsepower. 
which is more than enough for a, such a lightweight car. Uh, with all the right axle bearing loadings and providing you're using the right axles, diff center, all the rest of it, you end up with a bulletproof system. The housing that's in the Maverick is slightly lighter by eight pounds. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it all adds up. And you'll notice that the casing is smaller in size than the HRP housing. And that gives plenty of strength. And we've also still got the three inch DOM tubing that is sleeved right into the housing, welded on the inside and the outside. That way it's got maximum strength. The big difference is the size of the pumpkin. Otherwise you end up with clearance issues here and having to do some extra massaging to the floor to get the clearance to the big pumpkin. So I recommend this style of housing. Steel quality gear sets, something like a strange center, Mark Williams axles. Mark Williams axles are my favorite. Um, almost bulletproof. Almost, everything's almost bulletproof. Okay. To make this easy and economical, we provide these plates to weld onto the nine inch axle housing you're going to have fabricated. We also provide a diagram of the dimensions of where these components should fit and a recommended amount of shortening that will allow the maximum deep dish wheel. You've got to bear in mind when you narrow a nine inch axle housing, what type of brakes that you're fitting onto it, clearance to the chassis rail between the caliper and or other cables and activating points need to be considered. So we have a particular recommendation of how far you can go. And I always push it to the limit. So in the back of this vehicle, it's got a couple of anchor points through the rear panelling. You can see the load spreaders installed. You can also see the evidence of the mini tubbing. Now we cheated this out. We sliced it through where it joins to the chassis rail, literally moved the wheel arch over we had to put a split in here, same at the front, to get all the dimensions right, so we could fit the big tyres under. When you're doing this, it's always really important to consider what happens with your rear hinges. You don't want to affect those in a negative way. The same with the interior trims. So we've been able to still fit all the original interior trims, but picked up one and a half inches of extra tyre clearance. So now I'll show you on the inside of the vehicle the things that, that have been changed. I'm pulling the rear seat out. This hasn't been anchored fully yet so that you can see the changes in the rear floor to fit the three link. So we've removed the original seat belt anchor points. The floor here. It's also had these holes drilled to tie that frame in. Same on this side. And that's all that's changed. And you may or may not remember, but these seats are out of a 2017 Mustang. So we've used part of the seat frame, pivot points, had to modify those slightly so that they're still operated. And because we've mini tubbed it, this has come in. Got to make sure all your clearance is right for your interior trim. We put a reinforcing rail across from side to side to tie the pillars together, which required some trim work into the original trim. And of course, we've replaced all the seat belts with Australian compliant seat belts. In one of our previous videos, we showed how we put the Mustang transmission tunnel in so that we could use the original Mustang gear shifter and the original Mustang handbrake. We've even figured out a way that you can use the original 2017 Mustang rear handbrake cables. 
so that there's minimal amount of modification. We can supply the necessary parts to mount it up to our three link. So we've mounted the computer for the forward to aftermarket wiring harness on the inside of the vehicle. That way there's not much real estate left underneath the hood. So that and the relay control box mounts neatly here, full access to all the fuses and relays. We've mounted a vintage air system so that we've got air conditioning, demisters operating and also bearing in mind we've done a right hand drive conversion so all the wipers have been swapped over this means also the AC vents and the instrument cluster. We're just about to do the new dash pad that's in right hand drive configuration. We've made a custom parcel shelf so we've got our AC vents in it, ignition barrel and it also tidies this whole area up so you haven't got this ugly mess here. Now my main aim in showing you all these things is to show what a home builder can do. With the necessary components he can build a really radical car. It could be a resto mod. It could be something that you try and blend everything so it looks like that's the way Ford would have made it if they had a great body shape like this today. My preferred outcome is to have a kind of factory install that's easy to maintain, easy to service, everything is accessible, affordable, but more than anything else, high performance.